Mop Remix ruined my life, and not for the reasons you might think. Uh, being a YouTuber is not a hard job, but when you agree to work for a corporation like Skillcapped, you have deadlines and obligations, and if you agree to do a thing, you've got to deliver it. So we had a production slate all lined up with videos planned, and I was like, hey, Brian, you know, I've been playing a bit of Mop Remix, had some interesting thoughts. I've already written this script as like a little vlog thing. We can just punch it up and it can go on the, on the channel as a little bonus thing. It can be done by the end of the day. And, uh, you know, we, we agree to that. I start to prepare to do the VO and oh, some changes have dropped. And that's a bit weird. I should write about that and, and factor that in. And then it changed some more and more changes and more changes. And it's become a nightmare of a moving target. So, uh, you know, the other, the other day I said, screw it, threw the whole script out, wrote one half as long, framed as like this bit in front of a whiteboard where I'm justifying why the video's late. And uh, the audio for that didn't work out, and it looks kind of like garbage, and it's, it's embarrassing. So uh, that's also going in the bin. And, you know, at this point, it is a matter of just cutting our losses. So I've got the old script here, and we're just gonna, we're gonna hang out and do this as a bit of a casual vlog. We're gonna just talk about the the chaos that ensued in my life as a result of of wow remix mop remix otherwise known as time running is this event currently going on on the dragonflight servers it is not in fact mop classic um but it's an experimental game mode all about leveraging these these weird systems and playing around with ideas that we'll talk about a little bit in the video one example of these experimental systems would be the uh, the weird gem system that uh, gear uses you don't have classic gear instead you have these items which are conduits for gems and the item level of the item scales the, the power of the gem. Beyond that, the core features of Mop Remix framed it as a leveling experience, or at least leveling focused. The only tangible rewards from the event are cosmetics, and you get to keep the characters themselves, obviously. So people rightly expected Remix to be all about leveling alts while earning the money to buy mounts or whatever. And what I find so interesting about Remix is how it's just, it's laden with contradictions. So the first major contradiction comes from this leveling experience, because you have this idea of, of leveling being the core interaction, but then the remix experience is actually quite alt unfriendly when you get into it. You know, gems aren't account bound, bronze isn't account bound, upgrades aren't account bound, off pieces were just recently made account bound. So if your primary goal is to farm cosmetics, you're actually better off sticking with one character and gearing that guy up as opposed to this whole army of, of alts thing. Even the cloak isn't fully bind on account, but we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a second. Turns out I lied, we're talking about the cloak right now. The the marketing for Remix sort of implied that the cloak would be fully account-wide and it'd be shared between all the, the guys. Um, but if you've done anything with twinking over the years, if you've seen freehold boosting runs, you know that you can't give low-level characters access to that kind of power, because once they enter a, a scaled environment like a dungeon, it just breaks everything. So as it stands, what we got is a very small boost, uh, relatively speaking, on the cloak when you make a new character. You get a small amount of extra intellect, a small amount of extra verse, um, but that is enough still to completely break the low level experience and completely balk the tuning. So this is a problem because one of the core features of Remix is making raiding into a viable leveling strategy. They want you to be able to go to Mugshan Vault at level 20 and, and do things. Um, so you end up with a situation where level you know 30 characters are just mogging the out of level 70 guys um, because they have way too much haste and way too much verse and and whatever. It got so bad that Wowhead was recommending that low level characters boost max level characters through LFR and stuff like that. Um, and some groups were just refusing to invite max level characters because they were going with lower level characters for, for the sake of, of tuning. Um, and this would only be offset by the rise of of other tuning issues. So this is when I really wanted to talk about Remix because, you know, it wants to be this really casual experience, but it ends up being dominated by this discussion of tuning and scaling. And I find that really interesting. Day three of Remix doing just random heroics in the group finder was a complete nightmare. It was like the bosses were like, you know, it's like I was pushing tyrannical keys, right? Like they'd go on for three to five minutes and they were terrifying. But even just a few days later, you had Ginji farming heroics in half the time it would take us to do individual bosses. Like, you know, he would do Scarlet Halls in 90 seconds or something. And the same thing was happening with the raiding content, where on the one hand, you had reports of the heroics being aggressively difficult to get into, and Blizzard acknowledging that it's too hard to get into the heroic raids. While meanwhile, you had Echo players killing um, Heroic Shexia, a 15 minute fight originally, in 20 seconds. It was like this this post-truth environment where like anything you could say about the tuning would be true under some circumstances. So for instance, my first raid was a normal Siege of Orgrimmar, where our normal mode Garrosh kill, we had a Resto Druid who just maintaining his dots, Sunfire, Moonfire, out-damaged our Demon Hunter, flat out. 
but that demon hunter out healed the rest of her druid. This wasn't Pandaria, this was opposite land. But even this dynamic was deliberate from Blizzard, or at least known from Blizzard, because the slogan for Remix was overpowered maybe. Um, and you know, whilst I'm sure it wasn't the, the, the intention, in reality, you know, Remix is not a leveling experience, it isn't a cosmetic farming experience, it is all about navigating this power curve, either embracing it and following it, or in rejecting it. So the way gearing works on Remix is that it uh, uses the same upgrade system that we have on Dragonflight, but that is the, the major source of progression. All endgame stuff you get from Remix is the same item level, and you invest bronze in it to, to upgrade it all the way through. Um, that's quite a heavy investment, so you have that element, and then you have the cloak being progressed through farming threads and whatever, and that, that whole thing is that it is uncapped. You can get as big as you want with that uh, cloak. So if you know anything about Remix, you'll know about these frogs. Uh, and so what, ha what happened is that a few days into Remix, players noticed that the old frog farm on the Timeless Isle was, was very effective, like too effective. So it's relevant to the character of the farm to discuss whether or not it should be considered an exploit. Because people were willing to call it an exploit, some people rejected that, there was a bit of, of arguing about this. Um, I sort of fall somewhere in the middle where, you know, on the one hand this was an established farm. This was, you know, the most iconic farm of Mr. Pandaria. Um, and it used established tech. So it was an established farm using established tech. The only red flag really is that it was so lucrative that like maybe there was some pause for thought of like, you know, is this intended? Should we be doing this? So I would have been fine with the farm maybe sticking around possibly, but Blizzard, about 24 hours after this thing went mainstream, killed the, uh, the farm, and players, perhaps predictably, moved on to the next farm. So what we have is a game of cat and mouse, where players will find an overpowered farming spot, use it for around 24 hours before Blizzard catches up and nerfs it. Over the course of Remix's life, these degenerate farmers have accrued an unbelievable amount of power, and gave themselves the convenient label of froggers to help distinguish the god kings from mere men. So just as an anecdote, here's a random blood DK who was also on my server who I came across, and this was about a week into Remix where he had 10 times my health and 14 times the stats on his cloak. And at that point you've just, you've, you've broken the entire game. So a raid full of players like this, just as we saw before, um, flattens heroic bosses in a matter of seconds. Even Mythic Garrosh, the, the end boss of this entire experience, um, is already a shadow of his former glory in just the second week of Remix. And, and it shows that Remix is on track to turn to slop by the end of, of the event in, in August. And this was known, like Blizzard no doubt planned this, but they weren't planning for us to get there this quickly. So to me the true experiment of Remix was not the weird gems or the universal currency. It was uh, about experimenting with giving players more agency when it comes to character progression. It was about the uncapped systems and letting us go wild, because over the last few years Blizzard has become very tight gripped with player power. Um, and this is most notable through like the use of Sparks, Crest, Bullion, these, these currencies with rising weekly caps, um, which have a lot of very severe implications throughout the whole uh, gaming experience. So Dragonflight has this list of activities that end up feeling like chores. You've got to do your raids for your Bullion, you've got to do your M plus for your Crest and to fill your Vault out, and you've got to do your last draft for your Sparks, whatever. And Remix is about inverting all that and saying, screw the chores, get the stuff however you want. Every mob drops bronze, every mob drops threads, you can do the raids, you can go do bloody Lawmaster for bronze if you want. Do whatever you want and get this stuff your way. And that's, that's a really interesting idea, but at the same time it seems like Blizzard hasn't let go of this idea of the correct way to play. Um, because, you know, because when players found this farm, their first instinct was to nerf it, and when the next farm was found, the instinct was to nerf it. Um, Blizzard don't want us engaging in, in true degeneracy, as we're so prone to do. Because like, not to, not to plug my own stuff, but like, I did a whole video with this for, about this for Folding Ideas, you know, a year and a half ago, talking about this idea of instrumental play, and this idea of the, of the battlefield of negotiation, of about um, the battle between players and developers to figure out what the correct way to play the game is. Because ultimately, crests and bullying and so on are a response to this fact that if you let players farm for 18 hours a day, they'll do that. So the fact that we had players hitting a cap on the uncapped cloak, to me, isn't shocking. To me, it's it's the obvious thing to expect to happen. And, you know, with that tagline of overpowered maybe, I thought Blizzard was okay with it. But the way they've acted since the launch of Remix would have you think that they didn't see this coming. Like it hadn't crossed their mind that players would would find uh, the, the gaps in the system, they would exploit the loopholes and they would do all this stuff. 
So this is what has made making a video about Remix so difficult, because you have these contradictions within contradictions. You know, to me, players degening to farm their cloaks up it seemed like a really predictable outcome. It seemed like the obvious thing, but Blizzard's acting as if they didn't see it coming. Um, so when it came to, to the subject of rolling back the frogger's cloaks and undoing the, the frog farms, I thought that was an insane idea. I thought there was no chance that would happen at all. Um, but sure enough, Blizzard announced that they would be rolling back the cloaks on players who did these enormous farms. Um, but even that was like this chaotic thing which doesn't make any sense because what they did to capture the fact that there was a whole bunch of different farms is, is they picked an arbitrary number which they thought represented the correct amount of cloak to have. Um, and so they rolled back anyone above that number back to that cloak state. Um, fair enough, fine. But what they didn't do was roll back the upgrades on the items, which was actually like the dominant source of power. That's where most of the stats were actually coming from. It was a bigger deal than the, than the cloaks. So the result is that the froggers haven't really lost their god tier status and they're fine to keep, <laughs> to keep farming because they found new farms again as you'd expect them to do. Um, so the cycles kept going. And so for the non-froggers, for the people who didn't exploit these systems, Blizzard released what can only really be called a stimulus check, de designed to be like, a, like, a, like an I'm sorry, or to get players caught up. And so they did that based on like um, looking at the stats of who killed frogs and picking an arbitrary number of frogs to have killed, which they considered to be unreasonable. So, so the froggers weren't really set back, and the players who didn't farm any frogs, they get a stimmy check, they're happy. Um, the players who ended up suffering were players who fell in the middle who killed some frogs, but not enough to get their cloak rolled back. Players like yours truly, who like, you know, I farmed about an hour's worth of frogs to get footage for and to keep up with the Joneses and, and whatever. I, I'm not looking for forgiveness, I'm not tilted about it. It's just, it's very funny. So to sum up, Remix is a land of contrast. It is a casual experience that has rewarded our most degenerate instincts. It is a lovely experience that hates alts. It is both overtuned and undertuned, and it is an experiment that was afraid to take risks. It is chaos manifested, and I don't know how you make a video about it. So that's why it's not ready yet, sir. So if you've made it to the end of this video, you're you're a real one, and I want to hear what you have to say. Um, what do you want to see on this channel for the next few months during the rest of Season 4? Um, as you'd have noticed, Season 4 is this very vile blend of god comp and old dungeons with low participation. So uh, we aren't really sure how to handle this. It seems like you know there, there is an audience for Season 4 content. Um, but we aren't sure how big it is and what you necessarily want to want to see. Do you want, you know, dungeon guides for, for these these older uh, dungeons? Um, do you want us to start moving towards like, you know, previewing War Within stuff? Do you want us focusing on that early? Um, let us let us know what interests you the, the most. But yes, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week with something that isn't Remix related. Fingers crossed.